Good evening. This is a uh, audio test. Please adjust your volume or post a message in the meeting chat if you cannot hear me. Testing one, two, three, four. Thank you for the feedback. Apparently, the um, most people are getting the sound. If you can't hear me, then let us know, please. And uh, that's a very good point. If you can't hear me, how would you? Unless you're a lip reader, how would you know what I'm saying?
I can see that there are several people who have not, who their their machine has not successfully downloaded the video yet. So uh, we're going to play that video again later. I'm going to show you how to create that video, and then we'll play it again later. So I'm sure that by that time, everyone's PC will have it cached so that it should play um, in almost real time. Good evening, everyone. I uh, want to welcome you. We are going to officially start at 8 o'clock. So this time was just for you to tune up your machine and make sure you're seeing the pictures and the videos and that sort of thing so that we can have the best experience once we uh, get to our content. All right, uh, somebody says he can't hear me. Um, Testing one, two, three, four. This is a sound check. If you are not getting the sound, you're obviously not hearing this. But um, check the chat window over here. And um, it gives you some tips on what to do if you're not getting the sound.
Not sure why you might not be able to hear me, but you're able to hear the the video. All right, um, I think we've got everything pretty well set up, and uh, I think we're going to begin here. Hello, my name is Glenn Stevens, and uh, I'll be your host this evening. I have uh, Andre Searles helping me out um, and uh, prompting me. What uh, we're going to talk about this evening is the tr primarily the track studio program and this has been a, a cause of, of much um, confusion I think among some of our customers and what I'm going to try to cover is how to use it effectively how to combine data and video how to use the video to enhance the experience of analyzing the data and um, how to manage your data and video files so that you don't get confused about what goes with what, and uh, a few tips on the cameras. And then um, toward the end, we will I'll show you how to create this video that you are seeing here so that uh, you can use our Share and Compare site or YouTube or, or some other video sharing site if you want to post your own videos with the cool looking gauges and the track map. So um, with that in mind, uh, I think you've seen this, uh, this video a little bit. I'm going to play just a couple seconds. We'll play the whole thing later on. But um, I'm going to play it and then I'm going to describe what's on the screen so you'll see what you're what you're looking at there. I'm actually not sure if you can hear the sound together. Uh, The, um, I guess you could hear the sound together, but I'm going to pause it and point things out here. Um, in the upper left-hand corner of the video screen, you will see the lap information, and that tells you the current, the lap that you're currently on. So lap four, and that was a minute 47.7 lap time. And then the bottom number is how far you are into that lap. So the bottom number keeps counting up until you reach the top number. And then when you reach the start finish, it'll click over to the next lap. In the upper right hand corner is a free form text area. This is the sort of thing that it automatically fills in for you. It'll put the driver name, the vehicle name that you uh, had typed in to either your track dash or your track mate display unit or even entered into your TrackMate Basic. And then the track name that you've entered or that the track dash chose for you and the date that it was recorded. You can eliminate any of these items from the screen and you can adjust where they appear on the screen. In the lower left, you'll see the track map and you can see the little red and green dot. That's the start finish line over here. The green is the on the side that you would be um, traveling away from. The red is the finish line where you're traveling to. And then the little blue dot is where the vehicle currently is, uh, is located on the track. And then in the lower right hand corner is the gauges. And you can see here a lot of information. The, you got the TAC, which has the numerical RPM 
and also the gauge. And this uh, little green area will turn yellow or red to indicate when it's in the caution or the red line zones. The right hand circular gauge is the speedometer and it also has a digital readout. And it will also has these little red or little dots and you will see they're green when the driver's on the gas and they're, it's red when the driver is touching the brakes. And then the down the center you have the g-force meter and you can see a negative braking g of almost 1 g indicating that the driver's on the brakes here. So the vertical one is braking and acceleration and the horizontal one let's see if we can get it back to place there we go. The gauge is the lateral g-force. So you can see here it's well over 1g of lateral force. And then the number in the center is the gear that the uh, car is currently in. So you can see if I move it around that those numbers will change up and down. So uh, those are the types of elements we can create in the video. But, um, that's really the, I don't know, that's the fun part of Track Studio is creating these videos. But it's really a very powerful tool to be able to put data and video together. And that's what I'm going to talk about first, is how to open a data, how to open a video, how to put them together, how to synchronize them or tweak up the synchronization if you need to, and then um, how to use them in the analysis. The first thing I want to talk about is the uh, cameras. And for those of you that have the, that downloaded the Fuse interface, you can probably see a tiny little picture of me here. And um, for those of you who can't, you'll just have to use your imagination. The, um, the two cameras that I'm going to talk about are the GoPro Hero 2 that uh, everybody in the world knows about. I think they've only sold a couple hundred million of them. And the uh, the replay uh, bullet camera that is the camera that we're selling today. These are both 1080 cameras. They, um, I believe the video that we're currently looking at was taken with a, I think this was taken with the GoPro camera and the one we looked at earlier with the from Circuit of the Americas was taken with the replay. They're both quite good um, and uh, both work very well with TrackMate. They do record on different media. The GoPro camera, as you all know, records on a full-size SD card. The replay camera records on one of these tiny little micro SD cards. One of the hard parts about the replay camera is making sure that you don't lose this tiny little chip. So what I try to do is it comes with these little um, carriers to turn it into an SD card. When the little microchip is out of my camera, I try to keep it in the carrier. That just makes it a little bigger and a little less likely that you will lose it. So uh, that's one tip. Um, the other thing that I would do is um, you can play the video right off of the card in track view, but if um, I try to put it back in the car as soon as possible. So I usually copy the videos off after I come in off the track, just put the card in, copy it over to my PC. And then once those, that session is copied, immediately take the card and put it back in the car. Because if it's sitting around in the trailer, somebody's going to knock it off and you'll lose it. The um, Someone asked about the Sony camcorder. Um, most of these tips apply to the Sony camcorder as well. It uses uh, either a full-size SD card or the Sony micro stick. And um, 
you know, same deal. Uh, you can lose the chips out of that just as easily. So um, the um, the next thing I want to talk about is um, managing the data in the video. What I'm going to uh, oh one of the things that is a a another uh, challenge uh, with these cameras and this also applies to the Sony because SD cards use a particular format they are limited in size to four gigabytes of memory or, or file size for each file now you can get a 32 gig chip but each of the files can only be four gigabytes. Now that sounds like a big number, but video is pretty darn big. Generally at a high resolution, four gig is good for about a half an hour of video. Well, obviously at times you'll be on the track for more than a half an hour. So you may end up with multiple files for that single session. Track Studio is not very good at dealing with that. It can't chain them together. So if you're going to use that all as a single file, once you get it on your PC, you're going to need to combine those video files. And I'm going to show you how to do that with a simple free program that we have uh, posted the instructions for in our forum under the uh, video top. It's called AVI Demux some geek, geek name, so uh, that's what it's called. I can't tell you why, but it, it works really well, and it's really fast, and it puts, it puts them together seamlessly without any loss of quality. This applies to both the Replay and the GoPro cameras. They both do this, as does the Sony. Sony is actually even worse. It can only put two gig in a single file. But um, now to do this with a Sony, you'll have to convert it first to an MP4. But there's instructions on that in the user manual. The um, one way to help alleviate that, if you, you know, most of the time you're not on the track for more than a half an hour at a time, but sometimes you are if you're in a, a longer race. One way to do it is to not start the track mate until you are ready to go out on the, on the, uh, on the pace lap. And by doing that, you'll get, it starts the camera and it starts the camera recording at that moment. So you'll get as much as possible on that single file. I understand that there are some, um, some people that, uh, some pampered drivers that uh, have their crew started for them. And if you do that, that's fine, but you might get a half an hour of waiting in the pit area before you go even go out on track. So you've wasted some of your video and you'll have to combine it when, later on. So what I'm gonna do is uh, now I'm going to jump out to my screen and show you how to run this program, AVI Demux, to combine videos. All right, so here we go. The program, uh, I had it on my desktop at one time. We'll just type it in. I'm going to try to go so your screens will, will catch up. Some people's computers are faster and some people's internets are faster. So if you see me pausing and waiting at quite a bit, um, it's to let the slower uh, computers catch up, so please bear with me a little bit. So the program is called AVI Demux. Uh, once again, on our forum under the video topic, there's instructions for where you can download this program. There's both a 16 and a 32-bit version for the various versions of Windows. Unfortunately, there's not a Mac version. And um, it's a free program. It's, it's freeware. So I'm going to run the program. And it's got a very simple little interface. And what you do is after you've copied your videos over to your PC and they're sitting in a folder like this one here, I've, uh, I've got um, 
Now, when you bring it over raw from the camera, it's going to have a name like GoPro 0001. And if it's a continuation, it might say GoPro 1001 to give you some indication that's part of the same uh, session, but a, a second continuation. If you uh, look at them pretty hard, you can you can eventually figure out which ones are which. I try to rename them immediately to uh, give me a more usable name like Saturday Pro IT Race Front 1 and 2. Makes it a little simpler. So all you have to do to combine these two video files is, and you can see the first one here is, um, is 4 gigabytes, 3.8 ki uh, million kilobytes. And uh, the second one is one and a half for a total of 5.4, which is what the joined one will be. So all you have to do is take that, that file and drag it and drop it. I'm going to go slowly here and just drop it into this AVI DMUX program. And magically it will appear and it will be right at the beginning of that. Then you go over here to the menu on AVI DMX and you say append because you want to append the second file to the first file. So you choose append and it will ask you to pick the second file. And then I'm going to pick the second file. Select that. Once again, I'm trying to go slowly here. I tend to run through things too quickly. And then you say open. And now it has put those two files together. And you can verify this by taking this little slider bar and sliding it. And it will go through the entire video. And you can go all the way to the end and verify that it is, in fact, the end of the video. So you can see here, for example, I'm signaling to go into the pits. So that's a good indication that that is, in fact, the end of the race. So when, you're all, when you've dragged all those things in there, what you do is you say File, um, I'm sorry, you need to go over and choose the output format first. I, I was about to skip a step. So you pull down the output format, and you want the MP4 muxer. Muxer stands for multiplexer, and what that does is it puts the data and the video, I'm sorry, the video and the audio together. It multiplexes it together. That's why it's called a muxer. And uh, then you... Uh, Where's the magic save button? <laughs> Just a minute. I should have read my instructions. I oh, that's to save the project. There it is. the The icon is the save video. Um, you'll click on save video, and it will uh, ask you what you want to call it. And in this case, I'm going to say. Uh, combined file and choose save and it will run off and and complete it and as you can see it's going pretty fast it's already five and soon to be ten percent complete so it doesn't recode the entire format or recode the entire file it just appends them and you can even choose a higher priority I'm gonna stop this because uh, just like the cooking shows, I've got the uh, completed cookies here on my desk. So you've seen how to go in the oven, and uh, I think you on your own. So that is AVI DMUX, and um, I would strongly urge you to download that and have it on your PC at the track so that you can combine your files when you would like to do so. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is the um, actually pulling open up a data and video. So I'm going to open up the data that goes with that combined video. 
and I'm going to open up the video and show you how that works together. So we're going to start by doing running track view or you have to have track studio to do this obviously. Um, also one thing I did not mention for those of you that have not downloaded the newest track studio Um, that would be if you go help and about track view it will tell you what the version is and uh, the latest version is 3.40 and uh, you definitely want to get it because first of all it's Windows 8 compatible but it also has some bug fixes in it and more features that you will want so by all means download that and all of the things that I'm talking about of course apply to the new version, not necessarily the older version. All right, so I am going to, um, somebody told me that this was getting letterboxed over here, so I'm going to actually move to a different format screen so that it's, um, hopefully will sit in the center of your screen a little better. Um, and um, by the way, um, you cannot put, once you've created that combined video file, you can't put it back on a card because a card can only hold four gig up to four gig files. So that is only for use on your PC. Um, Track Studio 3.4 is a free upgrade if you already have bought a license for Track Studio. Uh, otherwise, it, if you only have Track View, the non-video version of the program that comes with a TrackMate, then it's a $200 um, uh, license fee. So I have opened Track Studio, and you can see that. I'm going to say File Open and it's going to suggest different uh, the files that I have available. What I try to do is sort my files under the TrackMate data folder and I try to dates and events in so that it's easy for me to find my data and video. If you throw everything in the TrackMate data folder, then it quickly becomes pretty cumbersome to find stuff. And if you go out on a weekend and start with a fresh SD card for your camera, it's going to record, you know, file number 0001. And that's the same thing it did last week when you were at the track, and you'll have duplicate file names. But if you create a new file, new folder for each time you go to the weekend, then you'll have much less chance of getting confused on your your um, your videos. If I open up, for example, a um, one for um, this event, you can see that I just have the files that I created um, for that weekend and, and no more. So there's not a huge number of um, of files to choose from. So that's really useful when I also want to go back, when I go to that track next year and I want to pull up some data to compare with because, hey, I'm not, you know, I ran a second faster last year. Why is that? I want to be able to quickly access those files, be able to overlay it with what I'm doing this year and find out what I did better last year. So I'm going to go back here and go to the uh, webinar data. And you'll see I have a couple of different files here. The RO4 is the one that I happen to know goes with the um, I'm sorry, I think the RO3, as you can see, it gives you the duration, 49 minutes. So this is the one that's longer. So that is the right one that I want to, uh, to use with the combined video. This is also very um, useful thing and this is fixed by the way this was a bug in previous track studio 
in the new track studio when you use it with a track dash it has the dates and the durations correct which is very helpful because you can say all right this is my two o'clock session or my four o'clock session and the duration also gives you an idea of which is the right data file you might want to open so I'm going to click that and open it up and the new track studio automatically pops up the setup window and shows you all of your lap times and let you choose which graphs you might want to view at that point. So you can see there's uh, a lot of laps. But just for the sake of video, I'm going to make it simple and I'm going to, um, well, I'm going to go ahead choose all of the laps. Now, as you can see in the track map up here, it always positions the vehicle dot at the start finish of the lap. So one way to determine if you're opening the correct video is whether the video is at the exact same place. So when you open the video, it should pop up and it should be at the start finish for that track. If it's not, you either have a synchronization problem or it's not the right video for that data. So I'm going to go over here and pick a video and I'm going to say OK. And it's going to give me a choice of all of the different videos that I have on this in this folder. And the here's the combined file that uh, that's the one I started to create, but it's not full. It, I aborted it. So here is the one I created earlier, which is five gigabytes and it's 49 minutes long, just like my data. So I know that's the right one. So I'm going to say open and it's going to pop it up in a window and I'm, you can expand any of these windows by grabbing and dragging them around. So I'm going to make it bigger. And sure enough, there you can see the checker line that is the start finish. So I know I'm at the start finish line. Now I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so you can see what else I'm doing on the screen here. I can drag it and drop it a little better. There we go. And uh, this looks pretty synchronized, but uh, if it were not, it depends on which firmware version you have in your GoPro camera, for example. Um, the replays are, are spot on, but sometimes, uh, depending on which firmware, the GoPros can be off by a second or two one way or the other. And also, if you don't have our synchronization technology, you, one of the track data or track sync devices, you can still use this. You just have to start your camera manually and sync it manually. So I'm going to show you how that's done. So this one obviously is already synced, but I'll, I'll show you anyway. I keep... Uh, clicking and making it pop into different places. Let me uh, see if I can get it where I want it to be. All right, on top of the, the window frame, that's, that's what I, this area up here is the window frame, there's some buttons. These buttons apply to the thing within the window. So if up here on the track map, you can adjust your segments that apply to the track map. Down here on the video, you can choose these items like show dash will pop up a dash overlay. Or you can choose settings and this will allow you to adjust Um, the data and video synchronization, as well as you can choose different dashes you might want to see 
and you can adjust the size of the dash. So you can make it bigger or smaller so it doesn't overwhelm your screen. Now, right now, all of these con controls down here that you are probably familiar with, the slider bar where you can slide and make the, the uh, track map dot go around, all of that's tied together because it's the both dot is chosen over here. So the, all of these controls apply to both the data and the video. So if I drag it a little bit, you'll see the video changes and the dot moves. Now, let's say, for example, if I go back, let's say I was off and, in fact, I, the video is off by just a few milliseconds and I really want it to be right on top of that start finish line instead of 20 feet away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, well, I know the data is at the start finish line, but I know the video isn't. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to choose video. And now those controls will only apply to the video. So that lets me position the video in a different place relative to the data. So I've chosen video. Now I'm just going to um, step it forward here. As you can see, I'm stepping it until you can see, actually, if you look very carefully, you can see the checkered flag out the, or the checkered start finish line out the window. So I'm going to give it one more click for good measure. And I'm going to go back and click both. And now that's locked them back together at a different position. And you can see this number here is called offset, and that tells you what the offset between the data and video is. So we just adjusted it by three tenths of a second. So that was the 20 feet took three tenths of a second. And if you're really good at math, you could probably figure out uh, um, how far that really was based on how fast we're going. But that's how you do the adjustment. Obviously, you could use the slider bar to, to do gross adjustments and then use the little uh, buttons down here that I was showing, the little uh, step forward and step back and the 10 second forward and 10 second back um, items to, um, to get really fine adjustment. And the other thing you could do, if we choose video, you could just hit play. And I know that's going to be a little bit jerky on your end because we didn't pre-download that to your machine. But what that will do will um, we'll let you put the video in another place and, and do it visually. I have a question on what would cause video synchronization errors. And um, really the only thing would be the, the different firmwares firmware uh, on a GoPro camera. It's slightly different between a Hero 1 and a Hero 2. There's some variation between SD cards, some faster than others, and so the file gets created and started a little faster on some uh, SD cards than others. Uh, 40 hertz uh, versus 20 hertz versus 10 hertz recording of the data rates. Uh, we tried to make the synchronization be uh, right for 40 hertz data recording. So if you're recording at 20 or 10, it might not be as good as at 40. Um, what other things, uh, factors are there? Um, obviously, if you're doing it manually, if you're manually starting the camera, then it's going to be, you know, as good as your button, your fingers are on the buttons. But generally... You know, I rarely have to adjust my videos and data when working with either a GoPro or a replay using a track dash at 40 hertz. So if you're if you have that set up, it's going to work. And if you have a TrackMate Classic Complete at 40 hertz, I think you'll find it's pretty darn accurate. Also, one thing that um, you don't want to do with the GoPros is 
get the latest firmware update from GoPro. It is terrible and it doesn't work with a TrackMate and it has like a six second delay and it is um, people are trying to back convert in droves. So if you use the GoPro software, which is called, um, I can't think of what it's called at the moment, uh, Cineform, thank you. Uh, if you use that software, and um, there's no real reason to with a TrackMate, but it, it does let you do some things if you want to play with your videos a little bit. If you're using that software and it tells you, hey, there's new firmware available for your GoPro, would you like to update? say no. If it's working today, don't fix it. And uh, if you do accidentally update your GoPro to that new firmware, there are instructions that uh, on our website on a painstaking way to down convert it to the uh, version that actually does work. Um, Okay, so I've talked about that. Let me show you the, um, if you uh, pop up a dash here, what these other controls can do here is you can pick, uh, for example, the, um, the full dash looks more like the one that comes out on our videos, but it has the um, track map combined. Um, if you, for whatever reason, you don't have a tack input, so this is used a lot if you do demos for people and drop a track mate into a car and don't hook up the tack, then you can go with the solo dash and that takes away the tack. And obviously we, we don't know what gear you're in either if you're not, uh, if, you, if you, we don't have an RPM to figure it out from. But uh, that's a nice looking thing. It still has the G's and the um, the accelerometers to tell you when you're on the brakes and your gas and the speed speedometer and the track map and also the lap times. I have a question here. What is the GoPro firmware version that does work? Um, I'm sure Andre will tell me in just a second. There, If you go to the our website on, the, uh, on our forum section, go to support, forums, and then the uh, video section uh, it tells you which one to do and all the instructions for down converting and in just a moment I'll tell you which is the firmware version that you do want. You can check your firmware version there's a text file on the uh, that, it, that the GoPro puts on the SD card and um, it will tell you in that text file what um, What version the firmware is on your on your GoPro? Here I'm going to post a um, a link on the chat section. That link is uh, tells you uh, all everything you need to know about GoPros, but we're afraid to ask. On the replays, if you go buy a replay, you also need to update the firmware potentially. The new ones are shipping with a good good firmware, but the if you have an older one, you'll need to update the firmware, and there's also instructions on how to do that. If you get buy one through our store, we update the firmware and verify that it's right before we ship it to you. All right, so now we've talked about data and video syncing. Um, I'm looking at my notes here on my agenda, trying to make sure I didn't skip any steps here. Um, one thing that I mentioned is the um, to get all of a lot of these cool features, such as the um, the the RPM, the gears everyone wants to see their gear number on the on the video or most people do and to get that we have to have a good working rpm and you also have to enter the gear information 
for your car into your display unit or your track dash or even in your basic. So the um, I'm going to show you some tips for getting the RPM and the gears correct in your stuff so that you'll have the best results and your video will look as good as mine does when you're done. Um, once you've synced your data and video, by the way, if you say um, file save or save as, it will save out a TQS file, which is different. It's called a TrackMate analysis file. And that file will remember the offset of the data in the video. So if you open that analysis file later on, by uh, it will um, it will already be pre-synced for you. So you can save that information. All right. So what I'm going to do is um, I've got a TrackMate classic display unit and I'm going to plug that into my computer and I'm going to connect to it and there you'll see you're probably familiar with that that's this is where you go to enter all your information on your vehicle so if you're going to create a car you're going to go in here you're going to you're going to see your car. Of course, you can change the name. You can put in the number of cylinders. This is how you get the RPM to divide right. If you're on the negative side of a coil, um, you'll probably put in the number of cylinders. If you're hooking up, as most people are these days on modern cars, to the ECU, then you'll want to put in um, probably either one or two, depending on how many uh, how many fires of the cylinders there are. So you may want to put that as one. Um, and then um, the rev warning and the rev limit. These are the numbers that these are set the uh, places where on the screen the yellow and the red is going to come on as sort of like a shift light. Then, once you've done all that, you can enter your tire size and um, your gears. So the best way to look this up is either on a web forum uh, or your dealer would have this. If it's a car, they would have this information. Uh, Wiki, um, Wikipedia has a information on tons of cars that have the gear ratios and uh, and the differential ratios so that's a good place to go as well to get some of that information the um, easiest way to put in your tire is let's say you got a 205 uh, 16 whoops 205 16 sorry 205 50 16 tire or 15 for that matter uh, when you put that in it will automatically calculate the circumference how we do this by the way is we know how many times the engine is turning around because you've just told me how, how to figure out your rpm and we know how fast you're going from the gps so if can figure out the relationship between how fast your engine is turning and how fast the car is going then if we compare that with the gear ratios you told us we can figure out what gear you must be in so that's why you have to enter all this information in to get uh, to get it to tell you what gear you're in so that gave us a circumference of 72.48 inches and then over here you'd put in your transmission ratios and these might be things like 3.4, 2.7. I, I don't have really good numbers on top of my head, but um, you know, fourth gear might be one to one, and fifth gear might be an overdrive. It might be 0 0.8, and three might be, we'll say, uh, 2.0, something like that. And when you say okay, if you go back in again. Um, 
Uh, I guess I didn't hit OK. By the way, if this little um, question mark will pop up help, and it explains all the stuff that I'm talking about right here. So if you forget any of this stuff, you can click on that and get, um, get instant help. Um, so you saw how I put in the tire size and the, and the, um, the different ratios. Um, oh, I know why I cleared it out because I didn't put in a diff ratio. And with a diff ratio in of zero, it assumes that you don't want to do this. So I left out a step. Uh, diff ratio might be um, like 311 is a typical one. And then um, go back and we'll put these in and it will calculate your wheel ratios as we're going. Sorry about that. Two. And then eight. So then if I said OK, it will remember. So that's how you do that with a TrackMate Classic. With a track dash, it's actually a lot easier. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, with a track dash, um, I'm hoping that you all can see. Um, can everybody see my little track dash simulator here? I'm going to go up to the top and on a track dash you would go to race setup vehicle and it comes pre-programmed for an awful lot of cars but you can use these to create your own or you can just create your own from scratch so if we uh, pick a car and go to vehicle settings then we would choose gear ratio and if you pick one that is pre-programmed, of course, it already has all the ratios in it. Um, you can change them by going in and clicking on them and just uh, typing in or clicking, you know, using the track dash itself to change them. And the same thing with the differential ratio, you can change it to something else. And uh, the same with the tire size. So you can just pick them on the screen. Very easy to do. And so that calculates them all. Once you have them in right, it will remember them. You don't have to change it again. And it will apply that and put it in all of it so that when you open it in track view, it'll already have that information. And once again on the track, dash there's a help screen that that tells you all the stuff that you might want to know and there's also a little information button that you can use to um to get help at any time is um i haven't got any feedback lately uh, is everyone still with me Give me a chat if you're uh, if you're there, um, or if any of that was not clear and you need me to go over it again. Okay, thank you. All right, so that's how you enter gearing and oh, on the track dash, I didn't do the RPM on the track dash. Let me go back to that. Sorry about that. Um, once again, in in vehicle settings. To set the tack numbers on the track dash, you would go in and choose, I'll slow down a little bit, you would choose the tack setting, and here you can set your max RPM for, that's the place where your engine basically is going to hit the rev limit or blow up. And uh, then you would choose the number of cylinders, and if you're hooking it up to the ECU, you would choose ECU, if you're on a two-stroke, you'd choose that. And uh, then you can use these sliders to adjust where you want the red lines to go. And if you want to fine tune it, you can touch it and fine tune by in 50 RPM increments. So that's how you'll get the yellow and the red lights coming on on your video to simulate a shift light. By the way, all of this will be posted in a week or so on our website. 
so that uh, if you want to go back and review it, you can go look at it again. If you have someone that did not attend the webinar and that you find this useful and want to recommend them, they can go look at it as well. So what I've tried to show you here was how to set up the gear ratios and the RPM using both a track dash and a TrackMate Classic display. Once you have all that right, once again, you don't have to change it again, but it is a little bit cumbersome to do it the first time. There's one other trick that's kind of cool, and I'm not sure if I should show you this, but I'm going to show you anyway. Um, if you're easily confused, just go get a soda and come back. There's a tool we put in, and if you don't have don't know your vehicle gear ratios, you can have Track Studio figure it out. And I'm going to show you how to use that tool. What you would do, I find the easiest way to do it is to go to the brake turn zone map. So you pick your best lap. You choose the brake and turn zone map. And say OK. Now what this does, let me get rid of this um, dash for us here. All right, I'm going to let everybody's screen catch up here. Now what's cool about this is you can actually see shift points. So when you push the clutch in, your car stops accelerating. And then once you let the clutch back out, it starts accelerating again. Unless you're driving a Miata, but that's another story. Um, so you, with the little black marks on the track, uh, TrackMate brake and turn zone map, you can actually see where the shifts occurred. You can also see this in some of the graphs, but I like it um, visually this way. So if you look here, um, this is coming off turn five at Road Atlanta. There's a shift right there, and there's another shift. But the best way to do it is coming off the slowest speed turn. So I believe this will be a second gear turn. Now, the thing is, you have to know what gear you're in at various places on the track. So this is assuming that you drove the track and know what gear you're really in. So this space here would be second gear. And then you can see the little black mark right there. That's where I shifted into third. And then this little black mark is where I shifted into fourth. And then somewhere way down here, I probably shifted into fifth. Of course, it's not accelerating fast enough that, to really be able to tell. So what you're going to do is you're going to position the vehicle in the various zones on the track where you're in that gear. And then you're going to go tell us what gear that is. And how you do that is you go up here to Tools. You go to Tools, and you go to Session Tools. And there's all kinds of cool stuff here, like you can trim off a session. You can align the GPS uh, using this tool. If you put the track made backwards, you can swap the axes around to make it right. But the one we're going to talk about right now, or you can change your time zone in case um, you want the time to appear correct. Um, but the gears is what I'm going to show you now. You can enter the tire size and final drive ratios. That's what I already showed you. Or you can just tell it which gear you're in. So you can see right here in this spot, it thinks I'm in second gear because I actually am. But if you didn't have that information already in it, like I do, that would be blank like some of these others are. And you can un... Um, what you could do is say, I'm not really in second gear there, I'm in third gear. So if I clicked on all of these, it's going to unclick all these numbers for me. So I'm going to do it from scratch. So I'm going to say, all right, go over here. Right here, I'm in second gear. So I'm going to check on, check that or I'm going to a little radio button. I'm saying I'm in second gear. 
So then I'm going to advance the over here to where I know I'm in third gear, and I'm going to say I'm in third gear. And it gives you a little check mark to say, okay, I got that. And then you would advance it to where I'm pretty sure I'm in fourth gear, and it suggests which gear you're in. It, it's kind of smart. It says, I think I, I think you changed gears, and you're going to say, yep, that's what I did. So you give it a radio button to give it a check mark. And then you're going to go up here, and sure enough, somewhere right here before the brake zone, yes, we're in fifth gear. And you say apply, and that will magically make gears appear on, on all your videos. There's two things about that. It's pretty easy to do, so it's you wouldn't want to do it every time, and it doesn't remember from session to session. And it won't store it back in your track mate for you. So that really only updates the data in that session. So that's why it's not perfect. It, um, the best way to do it is to enter the gear ratios for your vehicle. But if you happen to collect some data that has the wrong gear ratios in it or doesn't have any, it's a way to tell it what gear you're in and actually have that information show up on your video and analysis. And once again, if you save this as a TrackMate analysis file, a .tqs file, that information will be saved with that file. It just won't apply to any other sessions. Okay. So now that you're all back from getting your sodas, so I didn't, didn't uh, confuse you, let's talk about how we might want to um, analyze some data and video. What I'm going to do here is I happen to have a, a really good piece of data in another file. So I'm going to open that one up and use that as an example. And I just missed telling you something that I wanted to tell you. So I'm going to go back and do that, open that up again. Um, so I'm going to choose my video again. And remember, we chose the join file. Now, with the new Track Studio, let's say you you want let's say you do save this as a TQS file. If you say save it, it will ask you this question: Would you like to rename the video to match the ana analysis file? So instead of calling it Saturday Pro IT Race Front Joined, it's going to rename that video to the same thing that the data is named. This is a feature we put in to help you keep track of which data and which videos go together. So if you say yes, it is going to go rename that whole video. And then if you notice up here, you can see it actually reopened that renamed video back into your file under the new name so that um, it's there. Now, if we go back to um, here, you can see that um, well, it should be named yes, there. There's the um, oh, there it is. Sorry. There it is now named uh, .mp4, and if you played that video, it would be the, um, the video we just had. So that's kind of a useful feature to help you keep your data in video. The other thing is if we go open that, that data file back again and then choose a video, even though we're not opening analysis, we're just opening a, a data file, it opens the video because it, it looks to see when you tell it you want a video, if there are any videos match the data name, and if so, it goes ahead and opens them without you having to pick it. So that's also a nice feature. If you rename the video, it will, when you go come back next year, it will already know what video goes with what data. All right, so now I'm gonna close that down and open up my example that I'm going to use for the um, data and video analysis. But first I'm going to 
drink of water. Now here, what I did, if you'll notice, I opened a TQS file, which is the analysis file. If you, um, by the way, we're scheduled from eight to nine, but I got a lot more content, so I figured I'd run over. You're welcome to drop out at any time if you need to, but we're probably gonna go till 9.30 and uh, to finish all this up. And if you have any questions, I don't know that I'll have time to do a QA. and a I'm trying to cover your questions as you post them. But uh, if you have any, you can email them to us, uh, support at track.com, and we will try to um, to get get an answer out and post those uh, at sometime, um, well, probably next week since I'm going racing. And uh, some other people won't be around to either. So, um Anyway, so we're going to probably go another half hour here. So what I've done is I've opened a TQS file, and when you do that, it already knows what data and video goes together. So that's why it opened the data and the video. So what I've got here, this is the data and video that I use to create the video showing at the beginning of the presentation, and then I'll also be showing... Um, at the end, so you can see what we uh, what we accomplished. This uh, dash is a little bit large, so I'm going to make it smaller so that we don't cover up our whole screen here. Okay, so now I've got some useful stuff. This, uh, by the way, is Road Atlanta, and um, What we've got is, um, if we go to setup, we've got, uh, right now I've only got the best lap selected. So the way this works, if you pick whatever lap you pick, notice when I say OK here, the view changes because it's now showing me that lap that is selected. And if I drag and drop this, to some place on the track, of course, the video goes with the data. If I'm showing a graph, so I'm going to pull up a velocity versus distance graph to go with the video. I'm going to make this small. I'm going to hide the dash. This keeps wanting to pin to this side of the screen here. Okay, and you can, once again, you, of course, you can adjust all your, your screens to get it the way you like it. And if I drag to, let's say I go to the end of the break zone here, and I know it's the break zone because that's, well, that's the um, peak velocity before I hit the brakes. You can see the video goes right here, and that's a great way to tell, where am I hitting the brakes? You take the, uh, you go to the spot where the graph starts to fall off, and you can single step it until you on our dashboard up here. We can single step until there's the red light came on up here on the dashboard, which is the that's what we call the little rectangle in the upper corner is the dashboard. So you can see the red light there tells me when I'm on the brakes. So you can see that's when I hit the brakes. And um, it's a good way to get visual cues on what is happening. Or if you want to share your video and show it to somebody else and say, okay, what brake marker sign were you, you know, were you going to to hit the brakes? So that's um, that. You know, by dragging this around, you can get all kinds of interesting um, video cues. You can also use the video to help tell you why some of the data occurred. For example, I'm going to uh, pull up a couple of laps here.
actually what I'm going to do is undo both of these and then I'm going to pick both of them back I guess I need to close that graph and try it again what I'm trying to get it to do is um, sorry I didn't pick the graph Well, it was supposed to uh, apply that to both of the, um, give me two different um, sessions, so I'm going to have to do it manually. Um, the new version of software, when you pick two different laps, maybe it's because the video is open. I, I don't know why. Um, generally, it will say, would you like to create a special and, um, and open them up? I, I don't know why I didn't do that. I'll investigate after the after the show. Meanwhile, what I'm going to do is open up this same session a second time so that I can choose two different laps and get them in two different colors. This is a old trick. So now I have Glen Blue and Glen Red, and I have laps I can choose for each different driver. You can use this to compare compare two different laps on the same session. You can use it to compare two different sessions or two different completely different drivers if you want to overlay one driver for another. So that's how you would do that. So if I go to the blue Glen, I'm going to pick lap two. And if I go to the red Glen, I'm going to say none and then pick lap eight. So blue Glen's got, red, uh, got lap two, red Glen has lap eight. And I say put it on a velocity versus distance graph and say OK. And immediately I know that I see that there's there's different things going on here. For example, one thing that um, strikes me is that I braked much later on the red lap than I did on the blue lap. And I wonder why that was. Well, there's the way to find that out is let's go look at the video. So I'm going to apply the video. To, you can only have one video applied to one thing at one time. So I'm going to say apply the video to the blue. And what you can see here is that I'm right behind another car. And if we um, play that forward a little bit, there really was no real excuse because that car pulled out of me. So I probably just got nervous and was behind that car and hit the brakes early. OK. Then if we go to um, setup and choose the red and so we apply the video to the red by clicking this box here that says have the video show the red lap and i say okay now what you're going to see is the video here will magically transform to the red lap and i have to get to the same spot on the track here and here you see there were no other cars around me so I wasn't nervous, and I went as deep as I could trying to catch him. And I wasn't concerned that the guy in front of me was going to brake check me, so I went ahead and went in deeper. So that, you know, if you're comparing the data without the video, you're saying, why, why is this inconsistent? But with the video, you get some, some context as to what was going on. Let me show you another example of that. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to choose, I had two laps that were very close, a 46.8 and a 46.9. Okay, so I'm choosing those two and I'm going to uh, come up and look at the video or the data first. Now one thing that strikes me here is 
I'm going to rotate my map. And I'm going to try and slow down here because I know I'm clicking through things a little quick. Okay. Um, big difference right here. We're talking five, six miles an hour difference through turn one. So even though these lap times were pretty close, I came in hot here and pulled off more speed, whereas the blue lap, I came in slow and carried more speed through this turn one. And I'm just wondering why that happened. And how can I make it? What I want is to come in hot like the red lap and go out like the blue lap. So at some point, um, you know, I want to find out what I did on the way in and on the way out to try and combine those two and improve my, my performance. So I'm going to go look at the video and let's first put it on the blue lap where I carried more speed through the turn and let's see what's going on. If you uh, work it back and forth, you can step and as you see here, I'll let it catch up to you. You can see I was very close to the curbing on the inside. Might even had my wheel on that curbing to give me the... So I hit the apex really, really well. Now I'm going to go look at the other lap. And I'm going to apply the video to the red lap. And we're going to see what happens. And I think, even though it looks like it there, um, I believe that I did not get as close to the apex. I think you can actually tell that by looking at the video. Um, the other factor going on is that there was a white car on the outside of me, as you can see from here. See this white car over to my left. And likely... He was still there, so I did not want to track out as far. So hence, I took less speed to not push him off the track. So once again, it's a good way to get different content on why the, um, what happened here. As you can see, once again, I was racing this white guy, this white car person. And so I went in hotter and deeper in order to outbreak him into the turn, but then I couldn't carry that speed through the turn for two reasons. First of all, I probably went in too, too hot and did not have as good an entry angle or apex, but also I didn't want to check out and risk hitting the other car on, on the outside. So that's the sort of thing that video can bring to the analysis to tell you what happened, whether, you know, another thing you could look at is on the backstretch, you look at a bunch of laps and then one of them will be four or five miles per hour faster at the end of a back straight. And you wonder, how did I do that? I do that every time. And then when you pull up the video, you say, oh, it's because I was drafting another car and that gave you the extra speed. So it really, really helps with the context. Okay. So now I think I've given you some idea what you can do with the data in the video, how it all moves together and um, how you can select different laps and have it all go together. One thing that's really cool is um, the theoretical best lap. I won't be able to really play this for you in real time, but I'll, I'll do what I can. Um, my best lap here was a 46.8, but my theoretical best was a 45.6. And one thing that Track Studio lets you do, which is unique, I believe, is actually play back that theoretical best lap as the best lap you never actually did. So if I pick the theoretical best lap, I'm going to adjust some of my segments to get better spacing here because we don't need it changing all the time. And let me make sure I've assigned the video to 
the blue car, which is the one that has the theoretical best lap selected. And then I'm going to say OK. And now I'm going to play this. You're not going to see it in real time. It's going to be jerky. But in on your actual PC, it would... Um, it would be smooth, but I, because um, this isn't downloaded to your PC, it's gonna it's gonna be a little tricky. So I'm gonna show the dash here, and I'm going to play it. And um, you can see as we cross a boundary, you probably saw it right there. That car disappeared because it went to another segment, and the other segment was better. So this, uh, somebody pointed out, this is actually the best lap you actually did do, but not altogether. So it is what you can do if you could be consistent and do the best you did on every lap. So it's a really good learning tool. I, do, I use that when I go back to a track after uh, a year. I'll pull up the theoretical best lap from my tier and try to train myself on where to be and where to hit the brakes and do it the best that I could do it or even the best that I actually did do it. You can even save that video as a theoretical best and create a video out of that. And I'll show you um, how to create a video next. All right, uh, let's see here. The magic way to create a video is the right video button, not the right hand video button here on the video screen. So once you've got your data and video synced and it's working the way you want it to in Track Studio, it's a simple matter of pressing one button to create a video. You can do, there's some options on this, let me show you what they are. First of all, you can pick the, the, um, the laps you would like to see on that video. So I'm not going to do the theoretical best lap right now. I'm just going to do the best lap. So that was my 46.8. I'm going to say OK. It's going to change over to that. And um, I'm just going to write out a video of that lap. And you can skip. You can do like laps 1, 3, 7, and 8. And it will just show you those back to back and make a video of just those laps. The other thing that's often nice if you want to do a whole race is to have a little bit of of the start of the race. You don't want it to start right at the start finish. You want to see all these people jockeying for position right before you hit the start finish line. So if you go to setup, there's an options button. And uh, click on that and you'll see pre-roll pre and post-roll. That's for the video. So let's say I want five seconds of pre-roll and five seconds of post-roll. That will give you an additional five seconds before the lap that you, the first lap that you chose to record or create a video from, and five seconds after the last lap that you've chosen. Okay? I don't know what it'll do on a theoretical best lap. We should test that. So I've done that. I've said, okay, give me a five second post roll and pre roll, and now I'm ready to make my video. So I'm going to say, write video. Now this will pop up a whole new window. It popped up on my other screen here, but I brought it back. So this this uh, window here, and this will actually run in the background. So you can go back to doing your analysis while you're creating a video after you've set it up and told it what options you would like. So let's pick some things. Um, first of all, the video format. Um, if you want to go 1920 by 1080, which is the full 1080 that you've heard so much about, you have to save it as an AVI. It won't save as an MP4, and the reason for that is there's a bug in the video drivers that we're using, and we haven't been able to get it out yet. And it messes up at 1080 on an MP4. You can save 720 on an MP4, and it's fine. But for whatever reason, it doesn't work with the MP4, so we restrict you to AVI at 1080. If you're going to put it on YouTube or share and compare, I would probably switch it to 720, which is still high def, but it makes the videos much smaller and they still look really good on PC. 
In fact, the one that I've been showing you is 720. I, I cut it down from the original 1080. So let's say we were going to go, that's 1280 by 720 is, um, is that size. And then I can go and say MP4. And you can choose the quality. If you want a smaller file, you can choose a lower quality. Most people will not see um, a difference between medium and high. There's a little bit of difference. You'll notice some difference at low, but it's still pretty darn good. So, and the difference in file size is, is quite dramatic. So if you uh, are, have limited storage space or limited upload time to put it on YouTube or on Share and Prepare, you might want to choose medium. Um, once, uh, once again, uh, you can upload any of these to YouTube or Share and Compare in any format. So it doesn't really matter if that's what you're going to do with it. Then the next thing you do is design what you want your screen to look like. Um, you can choose these little uh, tabs here. Select different elements for the different four corners of the video. So if I go over here and choose the track map, I can make it transparent so that you can see through it. Let me go slowly because it has to update on your screen. So that's like half transparent there. You can choose the size so you can make it bigger or smaller. You can even rotate the track map to get a better orientation. There's a question about Vimeo. I do not sure what format it takes, but I think they'll take just about any format also. I have uploaded to them, and I think I've done it with just about everything. So those are your options. I'm going to untransparent the track map and make it big. And uh, I don't like it rotated, so I'm going to put it back the way it was. You could choose a corner for it to appear. So we could put it over there. And you can overlay these elements if for some reason you would want to. Um, so I'm going to leave it over here so I can see the driver through it. I just kind of like it there. The next thing I'm going to do is choose the dash. And you can choose different dashes. You can choose speedometer only or the full uh, tack and speedo. One of these days we'll get some more options for you. That's on our wish list to do. And um, you can make it high contrast if you want the numbers to show up more uh, readily on the video. And uh, you can also make that transparent, which is kind of cool. So it's like a ghost speedometer. If there's something behind it that you might really want to see, you can make that transparent. And you can choose its position. I can put it in the upper right hand corner. A lot of people have a lot of dead space at the top of their video frame. And that's a good place to put gauges. So I'm going to put it down here again. Uh, info. Now this is automatically chosen for you with the driver name, the vehicle name, and the track and date. But you can edit it, and then you can change it to anything you want. So you can put anything in there that you might want to say. It doesn't have to be three lines. It can be as many lines as you want. You can even get creative. And um, uh, if I put it over here and edit it and then put a dot in front of it and a bunch of spaces, when I say OK, it appears over here. And you can uh, make that transparent. So, um, so that you wouldn't see that box around it. And then the last thing you could edit is the lap info. And um, you don't have all that options there. You can enable it or disable it. If you disable it, it goes away, of course. And you can make it transparent. And you can also make it bigger or smaller. So once you've chosen all your options, it gives you an estimation of how much time it's going to take based on the speed of your computer, how fast it's going to complete this video. I've got a pretty fast computer, and mine takes about, depending on the resolution, 
you know, high resolutions take longer to create. It looks like it'll take about three and a half minutes to do this single lap plus 10 seconds. And if you just say start, it will go off here and um, I don't want to overwrite that. Well, sure I will. It doesn't matter. So I'll say yes and overwrite it. But you can also change the name to save it as something else. And this will actually preview as it's doing it. It will give you a status and um, and actually step through the video as it's making the video for you. And once again, you can just ignore that and go back to what you were doing. And you can play videos for, through Track Studio. So that all runs in the background and is totally uh, does not take over your computer to create that video. It just, just goes and runs. And uh, then when you're done, there's uh, several things you might want to do with it. Obviously, you might want to play it, uh, which you can play on your PC. You can put it on a card or and move it over to your iPod or your um, your phone. And uh, assuming you've saved it in the right resolution, you can carry it around and show people your laps on your on your iPod or your um, um, phone. Question. I should have gone over that. Um, I'm going to. But that's. And you can actually play that video. So if it's play it done enough, you can just say cancel it and stop it. But I'm going to say no, I don't want to play it. If you say change output, it will actually show you the complete path where it change where it saved that file. Um, what I did is I ch selected change output and to find out where it was going to put my video. And you can see C colon users video, blah, 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 blah. Webinar three. So it put it in the same folder with my data and video. And what it will generally do is take the same file name that was used for the data and then put a created on it. And then the extension name will be either MP4 or AVI or whatever file format you chose. And that's where it's going to save it. So you'll be able to find it. So when you go back to your, your folder, you'll see now this video, which is la da 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 created.mp4. Um, I got a question. Somebody's asking me about an audio bug. I don't know about any audio bugs. The audio sounds fine uh, when you create the these things. Um, so the result um, is I'm going to play this video for you, and um, I have to change my screen here. This is the resultant video. I'm going to go back to the beginning and play it. I'm going to play a little while because I'm also going to come back and show you how to upload it to Share and Compare very quickly, and then we'll be done. So this is what you get out of it.
Okay. Um, and, and as you can see, I think the gauges and the track map really add to, um, to the experience of watching the video. I mean, it's really useful information if you're going to go try and learn how to drive the track because you can see what the gears are and all that. But it's, you know, just for the sheer enjoyment of it, I, I like to see, wow, they're doing, you know, 130 miles an hour there or something like that. So that is what you get out. Now I'm going to show you what if I want to um, share that with my friends or put it up on the TrackMate website so other people can benefit from my, my wonderful lap. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to open a browser. And I'm going to go to trackmate.com. All right. I hope that uh, you're all seeing this. And I'm going to go to um, Share and Compare. This is a feature on our website that you can use as much as you like. All right, so um, I kind of uh, was showing the wrong screen there. What I did is I went to trackmate.com. I clicked on the share and compare link. And this is not just for uploading. There's all kinds of cool videos on there that you can watch from lots of different tracks that people have put up there. And so if you want to look at a track before you go there, you can download the data that goes with it. It's a really, really good resource for you to, um, you know, to, to be able to get data, overlay it, and also learn from other people's driving. So I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say sign out just so I can show you, show you how to sign in. You will need an account, so sign in. We made it really easy. You can log in with either your Google or your Facebook account, so or you can create a separate um, account that's just for this if you prefer to do that. So if I log in with my um, Google account, I'm going to uh, make my screen go away so you can't see my password. And I'm back again. You should be seeing my screen again. So I've now logged in. And it says, Welcome, TrackMate Glenn. And i got all these different options here. So I'm going to say Share. And there's um, different help for you. I'm going to find a track. So I know this is at Road Atlanta. So I'm going to say Road Atlanta. Type that in. And sure enough, there it is. You can also use the map and zoom in on it and pick a track. So it pulls up a map of Road Atlanta. It shows you some track times of different laps that are there. And it also gives you the option to um, What am I doing wrong here? I'm not seeing the upload button that I had earlier when I tried this. Maybe because my screen is shared funny. Upload video and data. There it is. Got it. My bad. 
And so you can give a title to your video and uh, then you just choose the file that, um, that we just created, documents, trackmate data, webinar three, video created, and um, I'm sorry, I chose that for the data file. For the data file, you choose the TQM file and for the video you choose the video file and then you just uh, say okay say upload now and it will upload those two files for you and um, and that's how it's done and it will post it up on YouTube for you under the trackmate so if you don't have a YouTube account it'll put it up there under the trackmate um, channel so other people can see it there, or they can go to Share and Compare and view it. Um, you can also, if you have a YouTube video that you've uploaded, you can assign it over to Share and Compare. Um, I don't know how to do that, but um, Andre says you can do that, and I believe him because I know he's done it. But you can... Um, Without uploading it again, you can just transfer a video over from YouTube. And we would appreciate it if you would do that because we like to uh, get as many of mine here as possible. Oh, share an existing YouTube video right there. So you can click on that and it will go to your YouTube uh, page and let you pick a video that you can, um, that has already been pre uploaded. All right, I'm tired. Uh, that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. Uh, I hope that that's been helpful. It's pretty much everything I know about data and video together. And um, we'll have another webinar in a month or so, and we'll cover a totally different topic. So if you have suggestions on what you would like to see in the next webinar, uh, email them to us at um, at I think it's webinar at trackmate.com and we'll take those suggestions and pick the most popular one. Any other I'm looking at the uh, any other last uh, chance uh, questions here anything I didn't didn't I'm not going to go over any topics but um, I think most people look like they're they're happy. So thank you for joining us and uh, enjoy your track mates. Uh, go out to the track and have some fun. I know I'm going to, and uh, we'll catch you next time.